So imagine you go to your bank, you want to withdraw your money, and the bank says, we don't have it, we're bankrupt. Of course, politicians want to prevent this, because you would be really outraged, and you wouldn't elect them anymore. So what politicians did is they introduced a lot of rules that banks have to follow. And one of these rules has to do with the CET1 ratio, which we try to understand today. CET1 ratio is defined as CET1 divided by RWA. So in order to understand this ratio, we need to understand what is CT1 and what is RWA. And both have to do with positions on a balance sheet of a bank. Let's look at this balance sheet of a, of a simple bank. We just call it Deutsche Global Invest, and it, had, and it has assets and liabilities. And CT1 stands for Core Equity Tier 1. And Core Equity Tier 1 has just some components of the equity position of a balance sheet. And they are just defined. It is really complex, but to make it simple, ordinary capital and retained earnings are part of core equity tier one. Debt is, of course, not a part of core equity tier one because debt is not equity, right? This is something else. So in order to calculate core equity tier one for this simple example, we just take ordinary capital and we add retained earnings, which is 25. So what does this give us, right? Core equity tier one, the idea behind this figure is this is capital that is put into the bank by owners of the bank. So if the bank, bank loses money, those owners will pay for it with the money they have already put in. So this is kind of a safeguard money. This is what you could understand under CET1, safeguard money. So now that we've calculated CET1, we need to understand what is RWA. And as I've told you, politicians want to prevent that banks go bankrupt, right? When do banks go bankrupt? When they lose some of their assets, right? And with assets, some of them are really likely to just um, lose in value, and some of them are not. And risk, RWA stands for Risk Weighted Assets. And it is a figure that represents assets, but weighted with their risks. And it follows like this. So we can look at the assets of this bank, right? This bank has four asset positions, and all of those are more or less risky than, our, than others. Let's look at cash first, right? We have 20 units of cash in this bank, and the risk weight for cash is zero, right? Because cash is zero risky, right? Even if there's a financial crisis, I mean, the cash is still right there, right? The bank still has its cash. So the risk exposure for cash is zero. Let's look at the next one a five-year government stock. Governments are still really, really safe. So even if there's a really hard financial crisis, it's very unlikely that this government stock is going to vanish or it's going to lose its value. So it has a really low risk weight, right? The risk weight for government stocks is 10%. So the risk exposure is seven, right? Where do I get this risk weights? Well, they're just given by politicians and regulators. The third, um, position on the asset side is home loans, right? This is 30 units. And the risk weight for home loans is 50%. Why? I mean, they are risky. It's kind of like a home loan is just the bank gives a loan to an owner, to a, to a regular person. And the regular person says, well, if I can't pay back the loan, I will give you my house, right? So this is rather safe, right? We end up with a risk exposure of 50 and the last position is commercial loans. Commercial loans is just loans to people or businesses, right? And they are really unsecure. So the risk weight for commercial loans is 100%, right? 100%. And this is 150. And if we add those up, we don't have assets, but we have risk weighted assets, right? We have our assets weighted with the risk figure, right? And now you probably already see how the CET1 ratio is calculated. We have our CET1, which is 25. We have our risk weighted assets, which is 137. And the ratio is in our example, 18.24%. All right, so why is this important for banks? I told you politicians have rules for this CET1 ratio and the European Central Bank says every bank has to have a CET1 ratio of 4.5% at least, right? So in our case, the regulators would be really, really happy 
with our bank because our bank has a CT1 ratio of 18.24%. And to wrap this up, what does the CT1 ratio give us? Well, it's a measure of how likely is a bank going to go bankrupt, right? And the higher our CD1 ratio, the less likely the bank is going to go bankrupt because it has more equity and more resources to avert bankruptcy.